presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Phil in Puerto Rico. Hey, Phil, what's going on? Hey, Tom, doing great. Um, just wanted to thank you guys and the whole crew. Best content on the internet. Really appreciate everything you guys are doing. We appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. Phil, how did you find us? I just typed in live trading and YouTube one morning. Cool. I was looking for any type of live trading room you guys came up in. The awesome. I know quality when I see it, or at least I like to think so. And uh, I mean, you guys are just a dream. I appreciate everything well, you guys do. Welcome to the Tiger family. We appreciate your growling uh, problem with us. Uh, my pleasure. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look what we got going on today. I hope you guys have had a good week. It's been pretty busy here at TFNN and some of the other companies we have. It's, uh, it's, been, it's been nice, but I'm glad to kind of take the end of the day out here and, and be with you guys. So let's take a look at what we got going on. We're finally up over that 4,800 level again, uh, at least in the ES Mini. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, maybe last week about how there might be a consolidation kind of forming here. Uh, obviously, a lot of pricing had kind of come about with talks of lowering interest rates. Uh, we might see a higher CPI this month. Of course, inflation is not linear, so uh, that might be expected. Um, but it just kind of brings up the question of, of how long does this get pushed out? And by this, I, I mean rate decreases. You had the European Central Bank come out earlier as well and said that they don't necessarily see rate cuts this year. Now, different animals, right, U.S. versus Europe, uh, but, you know, you can kind of get indications of, of what the general economic health of the world is, kind of looking at what these other central banks are talking about. So we're trading right now in the ES Mini, at least at 4804. Let's take a look at the Russell, down at 1931.60, cents, up about 0.34% today. Uh, the NQ is trading about 1.37%. YM, that's the Dow Futures, up about 0.4%. The gold contract, about 0.82%. We're trading at 2022 currently in there. Silver as well, trading up almost a full percent. Uh, we're trading at 2287 in silver. Of course, we've had quite the come down since about the beginning of December last year. Copper is up, but we're still on that downward swing again, trading about $3.75. Of course, I would love to see it go a little bit back closer to $4.00. Got crude oil futures trading at 73.89, up almost 2%. We'll talk a little bit about that. We have a lot of things going on. Uh, of course, the cold puts higher demand uh, on energy prices. Uh, you're seeing an increase at the gas, uh, excuse me, at the pump regarding gas prices. Uh, some of the oil pipelines in South Dakota, it's so cold that they're shutting down and actually starting to spill oil. Uh, however, America is we're really producing oil again, we're really producing energy, natural gas. Um, we saw that a lot maybe around, you know, 2017, 2019. Uh, we had just, I think, the largest output um, in, in by, by quite a large lead as well. That came down a little bit. Uh, of course, there were some discussions, I would say, maybe a few years ago. Uh, some of the oil rigs were being shut down, not as many permits were getting out, but uh, the oil rigs that are up currently are uh, producing at a high, uh, much higher rate, which is a positive. Um, but as it stands now with all the weather going on uh, and issues with the blockade in the Red Sea, uh, Libya still persists, and then some kind of weird political posturing, uh, namely from Saudi Arabia, and then, and then of course, the embargo on Russian oil, uh, we're going to kind of see this move up a little bit through this season. Uh, the bonds are down, means the rates are going higher. These guys are getting uh, pretty hit currently. Take a look at Tesla. These guys continue um, a downward trajectory, right? You had them trading about maybe 265, and we're heading now right to about 211. Uh, we kept seeing day after day, down 3%, down 2%, down 5%. Uh, there's some issues that t Elon Musk has also brought up. Um, he wants to expand Tesla Kind of construction away from cars. He's still going to focus on cars, but he wants to go more into AI and uh, robotics. And we'll talk a little bit about that. He wants more shares in the company uh, to have kind of higher voting power. And it's kind of remains to be seen 
if, if that's going to really take off for him. Steel Dynamics, we are trading at 112.71. The dollar still strong at 103.51. And, and this isn't even like a consolidation kind of move. I mean, this is an upward movement uh, in the dollar. Of course, looking at this initially, you could have seen a counter trend bounce, but it, it really has this staying power now that we see kind of this jump from this 102.50 level all the way up to 103.51. Uh, again, this... I, I think adds to the theory that we might be seeing a, a, basically a consolidation uh, in the S&P 500. We're going to have Tim Ord on a little bit later, and he's going to give us his fantastic analysis of what's going on in the market as well, uh, on top of, I believe, gold. And uh, we'll see what else he has in store for us. Google at 145.29, Meta 375.62, Disney back up 2% today, 92.17. Apple, they got a better rating. Um, from Bank of America earlier today, and this really shot up the, uh, the, the price of the equity. We're trading about 347 currently. Um, that's a nice uh, little gap up. Of course, not on uh, any significant volume, uh, but it's a better position to have, at least optics-wise, uh, that you got a, uh, a buy signal, at least from Bank of America. Lucid, just down more again today, 5.22%. Take a look here. The banks kind of had a little sell-off. I wanted to look a little bit. Uh, we only have two minutes left in this segment, um, but this is going to be Invesco. These are essentially the Bitcoin ETFs, right? So we finally got them on Thinkorswim. Uh, I'll take some more look into that. Plug, they were doing the hydrogen cells. Uh, did not work. Uh, their quarterly earnings were less than stellar, or anticipated to be, excuse me. And we're trading down about 1207. And then Humera actually down about 8.33%. And we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, excuse me, Humana. Uh, Humana reported the preliminary 2023 fourth quarter numbers, 91.4% medical loss ratio compared to an 89.5% expected. That's ahead of its fourth quarter earnings on Jan 25th. Uh, medical loss ratio is the delta. It's the change of medical premiums and insurer collects and the amount paid out its claims. The Affordable Care Act mandates that companies have an MLR of at least 80 to 85% each year. The report from Humana is pressuring its stock and other Medicare Advantage insurers, including CVS and United Healthcare, uh, which have yet to report earnings. Uh, the healthcare sector specialist said in a note on Thursday that Humana's numbers are extending a post-pandemic trend that may uh, that many expected uh, would have waned by now. This is the most significant negative variance we can recall and speaks to the still higher than usual healthcare utilization environment. Uh, particularly among the older populations. And we're seeing this come out too, uh, a lot more Ill uh, excuse me, illnesses with younger people. Uh, talk about maybe at the end of the show, if I have time, uh, that the increase in cancer rates among younger people uh, has gone up exponentially, um, which I think is at least something worth kind of talking about. And uh, kind of some certain ways, at least using AI, that this might be detectable. Maybe we can bring down some costs with that. Uh, so stay tuned right there. We have some more coming for you. I think we have Tim Ord on about 320. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. T stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Com. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. Take a look right now at Plug Power. Uh, they create hydrogen fuel cells, and uh, they are down about 12.31% today. And let's take a look at that. Okay, one, they had very bad financials in the recent past. Here, we take a little bit look at that. Plug's power revenue was growing steadily quarter after quarter until things soured up. In its last quarter, Plug Power reported only a 5% year-over-year growth in revenue and then a gross margin of negative 69%. Now, they're having some issues going forward, and so then what they decided to do was basically announce that they were gonna sell shares of the company worth one billion over the next 18 months. Uh, this is really uh, partly what catalyzed this kind of fall down uh, for Plug. And it is sad to see when, you know, you, uh, there is, I think, a sentiment of people happy when they see some Companies that kind of push the push the line a little bit uh, kind of fail. I don't think people like change as much. Um, but it is sad to see when someone's trying to you know push society forward with something like hydrogen fuel cells. They're really just failing at this kind of business and not becoming profitable. Uh, we actually have Tim Ord on the line. Tim, are you there? I am. How Thanks are you for doing? Me on. Doing all right. Oh, hello. Yep. Tim, can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay, I can hear you. Perfect. Very good. Good, good deal. So, well, what are we looking at today, Tim? All right. Uh, I, got, I sent you over some charts. Yes. Uh, I hope you got them. We have them up right now. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at chart one. Yeah, the put-call ratio we have for chart one. Yeah. It, it's just, uh, anyhow, this chart is the equity put-call ratio reading, which is the middle window, and it goes back to 2004 or something or five, whatever. And I want to point out that when – that ratio uh, on January 10th, uh, 2024, which is, what, a week ago, thereabouts, uh, closed at 1.55. And I marked the other times kind of with blue dotted lines when that happened. And every time it did happen, it came at a, a low. And that gets you in the vicinity of low. It doesn't exactly pinpoint the exact low. But it does say you're going into an intermediate term low because that's the ratio that high on a one day basis is pretty well it's extremely rare it happened five times over the last 20 years but every time it does happen uh it was an important intermediate term low and the bottom window um 
is the um, five-day average of the equity put call ratio readings. Anything above uh, 0.8 is bullish for 0.94. And the next uh, second window up from the bottom is the 10-day average. Anything above uh, 0.8 is bullish, and we're at 0.8. So sentiment-wise, we're looking at an important low forming in this vicinity. So, so you look at the bigger picture. You want basically everybody to be on the other side of the fence, which basically, according to put-call raise readings, are on the bearish side. So they're kind of leaning on the put side right now. So let's, let's flip to chart two. Yep. So we're kind of kind of working from long term back down to the short term. So the the sentiment is uh, the public is bearish, which is in, is bullish. You need uh, so the bigger picture on sentiment. It's bullish because everybody's bearish here. Right. And this this chart is, um, yeah, it's a weekly SPX VIX ratio, which is second window up from the bottom. And one thing I want to point out on this is when the S&Ps are making higher highs and the SPX VIX ratio is making lower highs, that's a bearish uh, uh, setup. And a lot of times, since it's on the weekly time frame, it uh, projects a uh, an intermediate term bearish signal. And the last time we got a signal bearishly was basically back at the uh, 2022 high. The SPs were making higher highs. This ratio was making lower highs. And that predicted a pullback in 2022. In 2023, uh, the market was kind of going sideways into the April May period. And this ratio is making higher highs. That was a bullish uh, configuration. Suggests the market's going to break higher, and it did. And currently, um, the S and P's uh, did break above the previous high of uh, this was at probably November or something. Uh, no, it wasn't November. It looks like about September. Uh, anyway, we broke above the September high. The ratio. As the market uh, went up and made higher highs, this ratio made also higher highs. So intermediate term, that was bullish, kind of saying that as far as the uh, VIX is concerned, the market in general should make higher highs going forward. So anyhow, that's a bullish intermediate term sign. Right. Um, so, you know, we're kind of going fast here, but we're, 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 well, we're nearing you know, back you can down to the shorter term. But we have to look at the bigger time frames to actually see where we are. Are we in a bullish configuration as far as sentiment, as far as uh, right. uh, advanced decline and all this other stuff? You have to look at the bigger picture. Well, I keep showing this chart, and this chart top window is the uh, NYSE summation index, and the chart goes back to 2007. And I want to point out here, going into uh, the, I guess it was September low, uh, this, or actually the October low, uh, you need a selling climax in a summation index uh, for actually a bullish picture to develop. You need a selling climax, then within two months you need a buying climax. And that predicts an immediate term bullish sign. So for over the next most likely a year, maybe even longer, uh, the market's set up for a bullish situation. Well, October right. 27, 2023, we hit minus 813. So that's the selling climax, a reading below 700. Then within two months, you need a rally above 1,000, which is December 27th. And on December 27th, we did close above 1,000. So even though there can be short-term um, pullbacks, intermediate term is bullish. Still on the uh, wall. So, right, right. So, so anyhow, the, the sim is bullish. Uh, everything I'm looking at is bullish for 2024. Not saying every day is going to be an update, but let's, let's, let's look at what the short term uh, picture says here. This um, is on chart four so, here? Yeah, it'd be chart four. Probably going kind of fast. I'm hoping not losing everybody. But uh, I do a lot with, with panic. Panic only forms the bottoms. And the more panic you have, the more uh, stronger that next rally will be. So, and yeah, I define panic as a trend close above 1.2. So the longer it stays above 1.2 duration in time, the stronger that next rally is coming. So on this chart, I, I got uh, the two-day average, which is on the bottom window, 
The middle window is a 21-day average, so that's the kind of a intermittent term uh, signal. And the top window is the uh, uh, 10-day average. Right. And so what you like to see, preferably, you know, I had another five-day in here, but I didn't put it on this chart. But all these, the the, the two-day, the 10-day and the 21-day average of the trend all reach bullish levels. In other words, so there was a lot of massive selling on the, on the pullback. I hear the I hear the music. Yeah, so Tim, I, I can hold. Yeah, Tim, stay with us. Uh, I want to hear some more of your thoughts on the market as well as we're you know kind of seeing this sideways shuffle pattern currently. Um, I, I like hearing this kind of bullish sentiment. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Orr. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are joined currently with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, you were just talking about a lot of bullish signs for the market as a whole. Right, uh, it, I am, and and so on chart four, going back to that, the trend is advancing issues. The definition of the trend is advancing issues over declining issues, and divide that by advancing volume over declining volume. So if you do all the numbers, it shows when the, the volume's hitting the down stocks, the trend goes up. So <clears throat> and you think that would be bearish, but it's actually bullish. So the more... Uh, 
the more uh, volume is on to the down stocks, the higher that trend goes, and actually the more bullish it becomes. So if you get a lot of days of that, you show kind of a sold out market. Right. So, right. Um, so anyhow, all the time frames are, are bullish here, and they're, they're, uh, you can have some. This is not uh, an indicator that picks the exact day of the, of the low, but it gets you definitely in the vicinity of the low. So uh, this turned actually bullish a couple of days. I mean, all three of them, all three time frames turned bullish over the last couple of days, but really turned bullish yesterday. And probably yesterday, I think, is probably a, a bottom of, of some sort. And the reason why, we can go to chart five. Okay, let's take a look. Awesome, we have chart so, five up. Okay, the bottom window is the... Uh, 10-day trend and closed at 1.35. Anything above 1.2 is bullish. And I, I pointed out in my market letter that probably last Thursday's low was going to be tested. And it was tested on lighter volume and closes above the previous low. It's a, it's a bullish sign. And exactly that's exactly what happened yesterday. And I always like to have at least two, if not three or four things turn bullish uh, with me. I just don't take one indicator. Excuse me, I gotta take a drink here. My my throat's getting oh, absolutely. parts. Absolutely. So but anyhow, yesterday we tested last Thursday's low on ten percent lighter volume and actually closed above the previous low by two cents. You know, but still above the previous low. So that was bullish. And we also had a two day trend yesterday of uh um three point five two. And normally that's right on the outskirts of some work, some don't type indicators anything around four <clears throat> and preferably higher is a slam dunk you buy it on the close 3.52 is just basically on the margin and i looked at that and i'm thinking god that's really close and uh, the right. volume studies were bullish and i think well i'll just wait one more day see what happens well it turns out that yesterday's was probably an important low to really confirm that the low was yesterday is for today's volume to be higher than yesterday's volume. Now, today's not over yet, but we're almost matching yesterday's volume. So we got, you know, about a half hour to go here. Mm -hmm. So most likely, well, there's, there's probably a 99% chance today's volume will be higher than yesterday's volume. And that's what you want to see, a, a little bump in energy to the upside compared to the previous day. Right. So most likely, there was a low yesterday, and I sent out, uh, actually, a, oh, an email to my clients here about 15, 20 minutes ago. I don't remember how long we go, but and then, uh, I'm buying on the close today because uh, the bottom was probably yesterday. How long the rally will last is hard to say, but this market's gone sideways since basically uh, mid December, right? And so that's about two or well, mid, as, as, so the sideways consolidation lasts about a month. So at a minimum, if the sideways consolidation is a month, the rally should last around a month. If the consolidation was two months, then the rally should, in general, last two months. So we probably at least rally into sometime in you know February, maybe uh, maybe longer. I don't know, but in general, this year is going to be up. So how high is high? I think it's going to be at least a double digit year. That's ten percent. You know, it could be another twenty percent like we had last year. We right. actually had twenty three percent last year. Um, you know, it could approach that. So this year, probably a pretty good year. And also, this is pre-election year. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're not going to see a bear market not for election year. Right. You know, course. especially, uh, you know, the incumbents wants to keep the market looking bullish. So um, definitely. And on. I think a lot of the like the things that could be like a bearish factor for the market are more relatively short term. You know, I mean, I, you know, I bring up a lot even when I fill in, you know, issues obviously we have with some world trade, right? Issues with the Panama Canal, the Red Sea, um, kind of those things. But I, I do genuinely think those are kind of more short term, any kind of depressor on the market. And I, I like this idea of a, a bearish, or excuse me, a bullish one going ahead here, so. Yeah, well the market, you know, a lot of people look at the fundamentals and they interpret the fundamentals. The right. individual does, the individual investor does. Well, the market inter inter does that interpretation for you. I mean, it gives you the signals what that means if it's bearish or bullish. So whatever's going on in the world right now, you can look at all the negatives and 
and all the you know the, sure. the inflation, the, the wars, and whatever. And the market has uh, uh, used it. Uh, in, yeah, this year the market is interpreting that at least over the next uh, what you know twelve months or, or mm-hmm. so is is going to be a bullish outcome. So right, I, I right, kinda, exactly. Uh, the best interpretation is is for the market to tell you what is is going to do, and there are certain signs to look for in the market. And I think uh, those signs I I've, I've displayed on this you know short very podcast we had here. Yeah, very so, valid point. So all um, right, well then we have I think now we have chart six. We have about we still have some time. We have chart okay. six up on the screen right now. All right, chart six. This is a. Um, the mill window is the um, discount premium for the Sprout Gold Trust. So that uh, middle window with the the red line in there is when that um, is minus uh, the discount or premium is below minus two percent. And what and drew mm-hmm. drew lines uh, blue lines all across when that uh, discount hit below minus two percent. Matter of fact, I showed this on Tuesday also. Even though the market has backed off some, the two two percent discount or minus two percent discount and greater is still um, prevalent here. So it can right. go down a little bit, uh, but in general, you're still looking at some sort of a low in this vicinity. When you get above two yeah. percent and the market starts going down, that's when the market actually can go quite a ways. But it can be off a week or so, but long as that two percent is still relevant in other words if the market was going down and the and the discount wasn't going below two percent would be a bearish sign i see but since it has gone down to two percent and actually has stayed below two uh, minus two percent this uh january 5th i think is the first time it got below there you're looking at a bobbing process you had a little minor rally and it came back down and then yesterday's close came in at 2.26 so what's that mean for for uh, gdx well, we make a quick note here. There's a gap on, uh, this is chart number seven. There's a gap on November 14th of last year at 2723. And for some reason, GDX likes to go to gaps. And we're, so we're just a whisker away from testing that gap. Hey, In Tim, my opinion, uh, we're probably going to touch that gap. Can you stay with us into the next uh, segment? Go over GDX yep, sure a little can. bit more? Awesome. Fantastic. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, before we went to break, Tim, we're looking at the GDX, uh, your chart you had. The GDX currently trading about 27.55 and uh, has kind of been moving downwards right. over the past month. What are yeah, we looking at with it? It has moved downward. Like I said, January 5th, uh, the discount, a uh, premium discount for the Sprout Gold Trust has mm -hmm. been below minus two, and that's usually in the bottom area. That gap on, uh, I got a note there at, on the charts is 27.23. Yeah. That's where that gap starts, and that's probably where we're going to head. There's another gap right above it. It's kind of a, a place gap there, a sideways market. That was on uh, November 21st. We hit that gap and rocked it up, and we come back down. But really, this market hasn't done anything uh, mm -hmm. since August of, of uh, last year. It's gone up. It's gone down. It looked like a head and shoulders bottom formed, which it probably did. It had projection up around uh, 32, 33. And it got basically to the minimum. Now we come back down again. But now you got the, the discount. Minus two again, so you're still looking at some short short term low. Could this sideways pattern go on for another six months? Yeah, it could, but at some point you're going to hit an impulse wave. <coughs> Excuse me, and an impulse wave is where the market pretty much trades one direction instead of this chop back and forth. So don't know when that's going to happen, but uh, internals look okay. They're not. You know, extremely bullish or bearish. Right. Uh, you had the bullish percent index, I think high has got, which is up around 53%. In other words, 53% of the stocks on GDX were on point figure buy signals. That's still around 50, so that's not bearish, but it's not really bullish either. So it's kind of a nothing market right now. So I, I don't think we're really breaking down here, but we're not breaking up either. But right. uh, I think we're probably going to test that gap and bounce off that gap and how the next rally performs will tell a lot. Uh, but momentum studies are just kind of neutral. They're just not showing a lot here. But uh, and, and it would be nice to see something in the market. That's usually when it happens, though. It definitely. And, and it would be ahead. nice to see some actual movement in gold as well. Uh, any of the, you know, substantial moves now, of course, there are some decent equities have done well over the past few months, you know, even talking like the August time frame. Um, but seeing like the whole sector really take off, would, I think would be super nice. Can you explain a little bit um, the the up down volume here at the bottom chart? Uh, right. Okay. The the uh, it's an 18 day average. Okay. Uh, the bottom window is a GDX up down volume percent, and it's an 18 day average. And over time, basically, when that indicator is above minus 10, the market is in an uptrend which is all the blue area I see. when it's below minus 10 which we are right now it's in a downtrend and the next window up is an advanced decline or yeah it's up down volume bottom window and the yes. next one yep. up is advanced decline with an 18 day average and that's also below minus 10 but you know in a downtrend you know they're below minus 10 but once you start getting above minus 10 is when another uptrend starts and and Right now, I guess you say we're in an uptrend, but you got to remember that the minus two percent discount always comes near lows. So, 
you know, you're not going to keep going down with the minus right. two on the. Uh, uh, so most likely you'll probably hit that gap, probably found support, and how the next ride will perform. I'll kind of tell how the story will be. Maybe we we go up for a while and uh, turn back down. Is is it's just kind of a mush market. It's just yes. Uh, really, you can't say. You know, I like to see a blowout. But I think the big blowout on gold did come in August of 2022. I'm thinking that was a major low back, a, a multi-year low back in 2022. And the market has worked a little bit higher. I don't think we have the strength or the weakness, I guess you might say, to get back down to the August 2022 low. So we're in a some sort of a, a, a consolidation phase that's going to that's building cause for the next rally uh but that rally may not start until later this year i don't know right right and i thought we were starting here with the head and shoulders bottom pattern that worked out pretty well but didn't follow through yeah and really the question is you know what what is that major catalyst and, and how are people viewing it on a on a larger scale well Tim, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on. That was fantastic as always. And I really always learn so much when you come on. So I really appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to be on. So uh, I guess we'll talk next Tuesday again. So next Tuesday, we'll I think Tom then. should be back as well. So that'll be uh, fantastic to have you guys back on again. And everyone, this is uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. Go visit his website. Check it out. Um, as you heard him mention earlier, you know, he releases updates to all of his clients, and uh, it's just more of this really good stuff, really get into the nitty-gritty of all of it, which uh, I think we can all appreciate. Tim, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you later. Absolutely. Take care. All right. That was good. And, and, and really, you know, that's, that's so real. I, I look at gold a lot, um, you know, especially when Tom releases his gold report, and just seeing this kind of sideways movement, at least in the gold contract, really, and then, you know, obviously we're moving down to the GDX. Um, you know, I, I would love to see this really like take something and just really move forward with it. Of course, you would see that with the other metals as well. Um, silver more so with that. A lot of people will invest in gold, right? As some kind of harbor from inflation. Okay. And I wonder, and I'm not necessarily sure of the veracity of some of these statements here. There is some of this idea that Bitcoin can now be a kind of, you know, protection class, essentially, right? This is coming from Larry Fink. And now, of course, that's not the only impetus for people to, you know, people people buy physical gold a lot with it. But uh, even a lot of these guys who want to harbor from inflation uh, will, will will buy ETFs even or individual stocks. And, and I wonder how much going forward what Larry Fink is saying right now is going to kind of challenge that traditional mindset, right? And I, I'm of the opinion that... Bitcoin is is not really inversely related to in inflation. I, I think it has much more to do with how much excess capital is in the traditional market. And I think you saw it mainly behave like that over the past few years. But I would say also there's a lot of incomplete data on that, right? We, we've only seen the increase and the, the, the rising supremacy of Bitcoin uh, in an era that had just cheap money, essentially, right? Take a look at what Larry Fink said. It's an asset class that can protect you. He goes, I, let's see here. In a notable statement, Larry Fink has expressed a positive perspective on Bitcoin during an interview today with CNBC. This was last week. He goes, I believe if it goes up, if the world is frightened, if the people have fearful geopolitical risks, they're fearful, excuse me, fearful of their own risks. It's no different than what gold represented over thousands of years. It is an asset class that protects you. Again, I think there are like some issues, again, with this statement, mainly... And now, of course, like, who am I to, you know, challenge the comments and, and sentiments of the CEO of BlackRock? But just the way that I see people really interact with crypto, in, in Bitcoin in particular, it has nothing to do, for them at least, uh, of being fearful that their, their purchasing power is going to be eroded, right? Or something bad will happen to the economy that they're in. Now, you've seen smaller nations such as, you know, let's say Ecuador, uh, start adopting Bitcoin, not necessarily a Bitcoin standard, um, but using it to dump a bunch of their national money into and kind of have it appreciate, right? But still, I believe from that perspective that that was much more of a way just to essentially make more money as opposed to just kind of preserve the capital that existed already. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for a short segment.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the market with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We're going to move past uh, the cryptocurrency conversation. Uh, you've seen recently, well, the last note on it is we've seen kind of a sell-off in Bitcoin um, since the release of some of these larger uh, ETFs that were just allowed by the SEC. The conversation is, you know, why is Bitcoin going down like that? Uh, I, I would say probably a lot of people are trying to cash in. I, I think... Uh, with Grayscale, what the, the model was, was you could give Bitcoin, get shares in the trust, but there's no way to kind of convert that back out. And um, there's have been, now that it's been converted into an ETF, um, they're able to now get the Bitcoin back out and kind of sell off. I, I think people are just trying to, I think there's a decent amount of people, at least, that are trying to get rid of their Bitcoin now, uh, just make some profit on it. And again, I think that's the general sentiment, not this brand new financial instrument, uh, right? What does he say? He's trying to, <laughs> I kind of go in a little too hard on this, but it's, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to make a, a, a new class essentially, right? Just like gold, but this is better. And, and how is it really better, right? I, I, I don't understand necessarily. It's not really tangible, right? What he says here is like, unlike gold, where we manufacture new gold, he's like, uh, there's only a finite amount of Bitcoin that, be, that can be created. We're almost at the ceiling. Okay, true, but that's also, you know, that's that's not like a natural law, right? I, I mean, you could, I mean, Bitcoin is going to be finished out once it's fully mined. But whatever the next thing is, I mean, that has an artificial cap as well, just like gold 
production has some kind of artificial cap, quote unquote, right? Obviously, a lot of factors go into how much gold can be mined and how much released, but still. Uh, anyways, I think we're seeing Bitcoin going down because people want to get out and make money. And I think that's generally the sentiment people have uh, on Bitcoin in general and kind of these uh, cryptocurrencies as a whole. We'll talk a little bit. Uh, you had the Pentagon essentially saying that we need to make more weapons. It's going to be great for weapon manufacturers going forward. Japan is buying a ton of our Tomahawk missiles. Um, whenever you see the Pentagon being like we are struggling against other nations, you know, I mean, is that true? But really, in reality, what you know is you're going to get a huge investment in new uh, weapons production. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I think I'll be with you tomorrow. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Have a great rest of your day.